guys, I'm back working on the second set of excerpts. Um, this week we're focusing on the Brandenburg excerpts, which is the second excerpt for Chamber. So if you're auditioning for Chamber, you need to do both the Momentum and the Brandenburg excerpts, or two excerpts, in addition to the scale requirements. Um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently this week. Um, I'm really going to focus on specific sections and focus on different practice strategies for you guys. Um, just kind of remember, it's going to be really hard to get these kind of like in a one hour sitting. You're really going to have to focus and really focus on how you're practicing to, to become successful at these audition excerpts. Um, these ones here, these are grade six excerpts are really challenging music if you're trying to learn it in a couple of days. So you really need to kind of space it out, um, to work on different sections and then kind of at the end, put things together. So um, we're gonna start with the first line, actually, because there are five lines in this excerpt, which is just the first line. Um, I'm gonna play it first and then we're gonna go over how you should practice this, so. Um, practicing this one here, there's a lot of string processing between the A and the E string. So one strategy I would do is, besides pressing it really slow, is just playing the open strings. The goal is to get your right hand, your bow hand, adjusted to what string it needs to cross to. So this first six notes sounds like this. To practice it, just the open string, it would just be this, right? The next one, same thing. The next one is a little different. And then the last one in the measure is the same thing as the third one. So eventually you should be able to go. And that is what your right hand is doing when it's when your left hand's playing all the notes. Notice here when you get to the second measure. Um, I'm having you guys use kind of half position, two, low two for G natural, then instead of playing at a high two for C sharp, you're going to use third finger. So the, there should be right next to each other, the two to C sharp. And as much as you can, after these open A's, you have to use the open A to shift into third position already. And if you can, try to keep your first finger planted in between the A and the E string. That way your first finger is not moving. Um, I'm gonna try to play this excerpt again, or this first part right here. And notice what my fingers are not doing. I've talked about this in class a lot, is you wanna keep your fingers down as much as possible. Um, so I'm gonna play this, this excerpt one more, this part of the excerpt one more time, and watch how little movement my left hand is doing. As much as possible, I'm trying to keep my fingers down on the string. Um, the next part, all the way to the repeat sign, it's just scalar motion. So you're going to start in third position, then shift back to first position. So without stops, it's very basic, very basic scales in G major. Notice there is an accidental for a C sharp. The first part up to the repeat sounds like this. And there should be a bow lift afterwards. Um, after the repeat, you're going to go into a lighter mode, these eighth notes should have kind of like an airier sound. So these sixteenth notes have been really in the string. When you get here, this should be a little lighter. So try to make that contrast. So the end of that line. Um, the 
fourth line it does get a little tricky. Um, here, the you you need to utilize your fourth finger. Um, in order to get this more accurate, there are going to be certain times where you need to figure out when to use an open E and when to use a fourth finger. Um, I've played it myself where I've used all open E's, so it's a lot of string crossing. If that works for you, great. There are some times where people like to use all fourth finger, great. And there's, there's also is a hybrid. Um, but the important thing is intonation that D sharp is a high third finger. So you're going from the Phrygian pattern. Since you're playing a high three, maybe this is a good place to use a fourth finger. Now notice from D sharp, going to C natural, which is low to D sharp. That's a step and a half. Notice that the fourth beat of that measure is an open A. Um, sometimes I even play as a C natural. So you gotta go C natural, A. Back to C natural. Um, to get this really articulate, you need to make sure your left hand is really hammering down these fingers. That's where you're going to get that kind of add tempo is by really making sure you're pressing down, hammering down, making sure you're shifting between Phrygian, Phrygian, this low two, and then also it's kind of like this isn't really a finger pattern, but this is a finger pattern you really need to be able to use. Low two to high three for this passage. Once again, you just need, I would write in the fingerings when you're using an open string, when you're using a fourth finger, because that way it's one less thing your brain has to do when it's going over this excerpt. Um, getting out of that. Few things. I'm starting the fifth line. I start one, I go back to a D sharp, and then I stay in half position. So instead of going one, 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 I go one, one, two. that open A to get back to first position. So once again, starting here pretty slow, starting here one, one, two, three, four. Notice I'm using this finger pattern again. That last part you gotta you start this is where you start to use the major finger pattern with the D sharp and the C sharp high third finger high second finger. Um, Bowing-wise, those th last three eighth notes, um, common practice would probably be the bowing would be down, up, up. So. So that way you end down bow. The excerpt should probably end down bow. Um, for the fifth line, I can really give you guys a good practice strategy. I, when I said hammer down, what I really like, if I'm playing this without my bow, If I'm doing it right, I should be able to hear um, the pitches, even though I'm not using the bow or even pitching. And that's how I would practice that one. Um, a lot of it, like I say in class, I think I, personally, I think a lot of it comes from, are you using the right hand, right? I say this a lot in class. If your left hand knows where it's going, let your right hand guide, your left hand will, will follow. If the opposite happens, then things are going to sound like you're going to get those clicks um, and it's just not going to sound cohesive. Um, so I'll end by playing the entire excerpt, um, hopefully kind of at tempo. And just remember, for these harder excerpts that you're working on, if you can't get it at tempo, slower is always better. I'd rather have something slower, more in tune, steadier rhythm more accurate shifting, better tone than something played at tempo that's missing those elements. Um, so I'll play, this is a good tempo that I'll be listening for um, if you, when you submit your video. So it's about this fast is what I'm looking for.
also before I end the video, um, notice this one doesn't have a lot of vibrato in this one. This is a clearly an purely an exercise in can you move your fingers? Do you have the dexterity and the the finesse to string cross, do some quick shifting, and switch your finger patterns? Um, as always, if you want to want me to listen to this uh, your recording and give you some feedback, you're always welcome to email me um, or share it with me on Google Drive. Um, I actually have to go practice viola because I can't play the next two excerpts. So, see you guys soon.